I'm going to tell you my secret to solving problems on a cruise that I'm absolutely sure will work for you too. I like things to be spot on when I cruise, but I suffer from one of the biggest problems in the world when it comes to complaining, and that is I'm British. Whilst we are masters at moaning, certainly amongst ourselves, we hate to make a fuss and actually physically go and complain. So I tend to suffer in silence and rely on that classic British stiff upper lip and keep calm and carry on mentality, even when things aren't right. Until I had a stroke of inspiration and found the way that gets cruise problems solved, I'm Gary Bembridge and let's go cruise complaining. Like most of you, I normally go to the reception, the front desk, the guest relations desk, or whatever it happens to be called on that particular ship when I have a problem. You know the drill, usually long lines, tetchy and pushy passengers. They're all having a go at the staff behind the desk and basically the staff pretty expertly bat away the complaints and the issues and nothing really gets resolved. Other than really minor issues like a wrong charge on my bill or perhaps a faulty cruise card, I never had any substantial problems solved this way, like a noisy cabin. Sorry, there's nothing we can do is the usual outcome. Then I hit a really big problem where I decided I absolutely had to find a way to get this problem solved. I was on a Costa Cruises trip. I was in an ocean view cabin and I couldn't go to sleep as when we started sailing, there was a constant metal clanging noise. I just could not envisage going on like that for another six nights. So in the morning, I went along to front desk and after waiting in that line we're all familiar with for ages, all I got was, we'll look into it. Nothing happened as usual. So I went and I bought earplugs to try that night. That didn't help. I even knocked on the next door cabin to try and find out if they were having the same problem. The problem I had is they didn't speak English and they basically just shrugged me off and thought I was a little bit crazy. I stayed awake really, really late that night until I was absolutely so exhausted and eventually I did go to sleep. The cruise was turning into my absolute nightmare. Before I dozed off, it was about 2 a.m. in the morning, I realized I had to find a new way to get this fixed. And it came to me that I couldn't be the only one who've suffered from this problem in this cabin. And I began to wonder, are there dud or are there problem cabins on board cruise ships that the crew actually know about? And if they know about it, is there something that they can and will do for me because they know it's an issue? So I decided using my cabin steward for my particular cabin could be the way to go. Finding an ally to kind of fight my corner and having someone on the inside could actually be the trick. So in the morning, I got my cabin steward, I got him to come and listen to the noise. We were still sailing uh, and it was before I went to breakfast. He agreed there was a noise, there was an issue. So I basically made it his problem and I asked him, can you solve this problem for me? Went off to breakfast and there was a whole whirlwind of action. He spoke to his deck supervisor who checked out the noise as I found out and then she escalated to the hotel director. And by the time I returned from breakfast, I wasn't that long away, there was actually a call, a message from the hotel director telling me that they were going to move my cabin to a different cabin. My finding an ally in the crew, making it their problem to solve, and then letting them use the various levers they know will work was just so much more effective than battling with the front desk. In fact, on this cruise, they moved me to a really fantastic cabin. I was moved from an ocean view cabin into a beautiful balcony cabin, and I enjoyed a wonderful and importantly, restful cruise. So of course, the question for me after this experience was, was this a once-off fluke, or was this something much bigger that I had stumbled on? So I resolved basically that if I ever had problems on a cruise ship in the future, I would test it out, I would try it out. And here's how it actually played out. A couple of years later, I had a similar problem with clanking noises. These do seem to follow me on cruises I discovered when I'm in an ocean view cabin, sort of at the bottom of the ship. Anyway, this time it happened on an Antarctica cruise. It was on Silver Sea, Silver Cloud. From around about four or five o'clock in the morning, this intermittent and consistent clanging happened out of the cabin. And it carried on throughout the day on and off until about 6 p.m., 7 p.m. at night. So I raised it with my cabin butler following what I'd done before, and I asked him to look at it and find a solution. Later that day, I got a call from the hotel director, and like on Costa, I was moved to another and better cabin, and he apologized for the noise and the inconvenience. This got me thinking again, 
Are there known issues on board cruise ships that if you do raise those to the crew specifically who are working in that area, they know they're an issue and will escalate them quickly and they get addressed, which is unlikely by the front desk who won't know that. Now, of course, as you've gathered, I'm very much about having a comfortable but importantly quiet cabin. And about a year after that Silver Sea cruise, I was able to test this theory out again. This time it was on a cross Europe Mekong River cruise. Now during the night and the day, there was this strong vibration every now and again underneath my cabin. It reverberated through the bed, which kind of woke me up during the night. I used the same process as I had done in those past two cruises. I spoke to my cabin student in the morning, who immediately said like that, oh, that's a generator, leave it with him. And within less than an hour, the hotel manager called me, apologized and moved me. But does this theory that I've got only work for cabin issues? And I really wondered that because it had worked for me three times now. This is what I found out about non-cabin issues. I tried a very similar approach when I was on a cruise line excursion. Of course, cruise lines use local contractors. I was on a cycling tour of a Pino cruise this time. The tour guides were terrible. They were disinterested. They rushed us. They did nothing when a woman fell off her bike and we all actually had to help her while they just rode off ahead. They didn't even go the full excursion time. Now I know on cruise line excursions, there's always someone from the ship on each of those excursions as their kind of ears and eyes. And also importantly, they stay in contact with the ship if the excursion is running late. Now normally it's someone pretty junior and they actually stay anonymous on the excursion. So many people on excursions have no idea that this happens and certainly have no idea who that particular person is. Now I'd spotted on this cycling excursion that our cruise line person was one of the dancers. So I'd spoken to her at various times on the tour and then at the end, and I got her to agree there'd been a series of issues with the excursion and asked her if she would raise it with the excursion manager. Now, once we're back on the ship in our cabin, before I even could follow up with the excursion manager, he called me, apologized for the issues and refunded us for the excursion. Again, proving that finding an ally within the crew that acknowledges your problem and you then ask to solve the problem is a much, much better way than dealing with it straight head on with the front desk. Interestingly, we also found out from talking to others that have been on the excursion that they had not been contacted nor refunded for their excursion. So again, proving the importance of this process. By being friendly, polite, respectful to the crew that I come into contact with all the time, when I ask for help, they're interested and increasingly vested in solving it because they know that I'm not being kind of overly demanding. I'm not trying to just push my luck and get some sort of freebie. They become vested in my problem. And importantly, they know the levers and who to talk to behind the scenes to solve my problem. This much smarter way of solving problems on any cruise I've got has meant that my kind of ingrained British reticent to complain is kind of kept intact, but it works for me. It's worth trying the next time you have a problem on the cruise. Don't you think? I'd love to hear how you get on. If you want more smart cruise tips that most cruise passengers don't know about like this one, I've created this short playlist here for you to watch. Enjoy.